Welcome back into the Bangtan Universe Wormhole. Today we're attempting to solve a mystery that's puzzled ARMY for five years. I'm talking about BTS's live performances of Dionysus, where the members seem to be playing gods. The mystery is which gods they're playing. Are they all Dionysus, or is only RM Dionysus? What if some of them are Dionysus? Why is Jin riding a horse here? Why is Jungkook dancing in a kiddie pool? And what does any of this have to do with the BU? We have your answers right here. First, I'll give you a refresher on the quote unquote real Dionysus. He's best known as the Greek god of wine, intoxication, chaos, and madness. But he was also a god of the arts. The Greeks thought the divine madness Dionysus produced in his followers could inspire creativity. That's why when BTS performed Dionysus Live, they sang about getting drunk on art and danced like they really were in a state of divine madness. Dionysus was the son of the god Zeus and the mortal Samil, but Samil didn't give birth to him. While she was pregnant with Dionysus, she asked Zeus to show her his true form, and when he did, she burned to death in the fire of his glory. But Dionysus was alive in the ashes, so Zeus saved him and sewed him into his thigh. As you do. So when Dionysus came to term, Zeus was the one who gave birth to him. Dionysus had many lovers, but his true love was the Princess Ariadne. If her name sounds familiar, that's because she was the one who helped Theseus navigate the Minotaur's maze by giving him a red string to mark his path. But later, Theseus abandoned her on an island, either accidentally or on purpose, depending on which myth you read. Dionysus found her there, and they fell in love. Then they got married and had a very happy union. There's more to Dionysus' story, but I'll dole it out in small pieces as I discuss sections of two live performances of the song. First, I'll cover the City Dionysia VCR that played at the Golden Disc Awards, and then I'll discuss the super elaborate show from the 2019 MMAs. In these two performances, BTS show us different parts of Dionysus' story, and in the MMA performance, they also recreate the experience of the real Dionysian festival. The celebration was called City Dionysia, and it was a five-day festival held in Athens. It began with a rowdy procession to the Theater of Dionysus, then continued with performances of music, poetry, and plays. The City Dionysia VCR isn't about the festival itself. It's about an invitation for us to join the festival, first by remembering or learning about Dionysus from the VCR, and then by watching BTS perform as if they're actually part of the show at the Theater of Dionysus. The VCR begins with a chopped off, almost unintelligible quote from Carl Jung, but it's an important quote, so I'll tell you what RM is actually saying. The dream is the small hidden door in the deepest and most intimate sanctum of the soul, which opens to that primeval cosmic night that was soul long before there was conscious ego, and will be soul far beyond what a conscious ego could ever reach. And here's what Jung actually meant when he said that. Dreams take you beyond your conscious self, in other words, your ego, and into the territory of your unconscious self, which is your shadow. For Jung, the shadow contains the parts of our souls which we suppress, either because they embarrass us or because they're socially unacceptable. We bury our shadow selves so deeply that we don't even know they exist. But what does this have to do with Dionysus? Well, he's the god of chaos, and he's also sometimes called the liberator. So BTS is simultaneously using Jung's psychological view and the ancient Greeks' literal view to explain what Dionysus means to them. And since the VCR begins with this quote from Jung, BTS is saying that creativity comes from releasing their shadows through dreams. What could be more appropriate for a group that's focused on dreams throughout their musical career and made dreams a key part of the BU? As we hear RM's quote, we see the desert, another key symbol for BTS. In their hidden track C, they sing about struggling in the desert while trying to reach the sea. The desert represents the hardships they endured in their early career, and the sea is the success they hoped for. But in this desert, we find items connected to Dionysus, which we'll see the members display in a moment. 
And we also see an hourglass because sand has a second meaning within the Bangtan universe. It represents time and time travel. Now let's dig into the more confusing parts of the VCR. Which god does each member represent and what do their various symbols mean? Well, first, each member shows us something about Dionysus, but only six of them portray Dionysus. But here's a surprise. Each of them displays a second symbol related to his character in the BU. Let me explain. If you've seen this video, you know that each BU character relates to a particular element of the yin-yang wu-shing system. If you haven't seen this video, don't worry. You're probably very confused, but I'm about to give you a Cliff Notes version. Wuxing is an ancient Chinese philosophy that says each person, place, and thing is defined by one of the five essential elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. These elements are constantly interacting and changing, which explains why this famous symbol is part of the Wuxing system. Yin and Yang are opposites, which are constantly switching places. They embody the idea that nothing in life is permanent. So when we add yin and yang to the five wuxing elements, we get seven symbols which match perfectly with the seven heroes of the BU. And we'll see the members displaying those seven symbols in the VCR. First, there's RM, representing Dionysus as the king on the throne, ready to set city Dionysia in motion. His staff, which is called a tirsus, is his symbol of office. The vines wrapping around it are ivy, and you'll see more ivy later in the VCR. But for now, notice that the Tirsus is made of wood, and R.M.'s throne is also wood. That's because the symbol of his BU character is wood. Now let's move on to Jin. Some theorists think he represents Aphrodite since he's holding pearls, and they're her symbol exclusively. But actually, Jin is showing us that Dionysus seduced Aphrodite. That's why he has that look in his eye. They had a son named Priapus, whose most famous bodily organ plays a significant role in the city Dionysia. Literally, if you get my drift. If you don't, well, Google is your friend. But back to the pearls. Ancient Greece associated them only with Aphrodite, but many cultures have associated pearls with the moon. And in Wuxing theory, the moon is associated with yin, which symbolizes things that are dark and hidden. In the BU, Yin is the symbol associated with Salt Chin. Next up is Jimin. He's shown in front of a waterfall for two reasons. First, his character in the BU is associated with water. And second, in ancient Greece and Rome, water was associated with healing. In fact, there were healing springs on the island of Andros, which were dedicated to Dionysus. And get this, Dionysus supposedly healed people in their dreams. As for Jimin's headdress, the Greeks associated snakes with Huon too, and snakes were one of Dionysus' favorite animals. Next comes Sugar, drinking wine because Dionysus is the god of wine. But the fire behind Sugar represents two more things. From a mythological standpoint, it's a callback to Dionysus' mother dying by fire when she saw Zeus in his true form. And from a BU standpoint, Yungi's mother died by fire too, and he tried to kill himself the same way. And fire is Yungi's wuxing element. Jehovah is holding grapes because Dionysus was the first to realize you could ferment grapes and make wine. You can find his wuxing element in the chains on his hand. Hosek's element is metal, and when wuxing practitioners depict the elements visually, they often use gold or silver to represent metal. Now look closely at Hobie's hand. His chains are both gold and silver. Next up is Jungkook. This is where we see the ivy leaves again. When RM posed as the king of city Dionysia, his tirsus was wrapped with ivy leaves. Now we have the magnae of BTS posing as Dionysus as a youth when he loved to wear crowns of ivy. And if you look closely, you can see a mountain in the distance behind him. This is important because Dionysus was raised on Mount Nysa. And mountains are one representation of the Wuxing element, Earth. Earth is Jungkook's Wuxing element. Finally, we have V, the only member who's not playing Dionysus. He's playing Apollo, and for good reason. V has the most important role in this VCR. To begin with, Apollo is the sun god, and in the BU, Taeyang's symbol is Yang, the opposite of Yin. 
So Young is associated with the sun in the BU, and in real life, V is playing the god of the sun. But we're just getting started. One of Apollo's titles is the Revealer of Dionysus, and that's what V is doing here. When he lifts the veil from his face, he's lifting the veil on the mysteries of Dionysus' ceremonies. At the same time, he's lifting the veil on our shadow selves, which Jung says we can access through dreams. Now, Jung believed that we could find healing by facing our shadows. And if you remember, Dionysus was a god who healed through dreams. So this makes perfect sense. But there's still more. Apollo and Dionysus are actually brothers, and they have a lot in common despite being opposites in other ways. Both are associated with the arts, although Dionysus inspires creativity through divine madness, while Apollo uses rationality. Both are also associated with healing and with dreams. You already know that Dionysus heals through dreams. As for Apollo, he was thought to interpret dreams, and he did most of his healing through his son Asclepius, who healed people through dreams, just like Dionysus. Now you know why V is posing against the night sky while the other members are in bright light. Apollo might be the sun god, but in this VCR, V is linking Apollo to dreams, which occur in darkness and reveal our shadows. And here's one more thing. You already know that in the BU, Young has prophetic dreams. But did you know that Apollo was the god of prophecy? Now it makes perfect sense for V to play Apollo in a VCR about Dionysus. So it's time to switch gears. At the 2019 MMAs, BTS didn't just focus on Dionysus. They also gave us an idea of what the procession to the theater of Dionysus might have looked like. And while they were doing that, they were also referencing their BU characters, although this time they didn't get into Wuxing. Let's start with those light bulbs that drop from the ceiling each time a BTS member appears. Eventually, the lights will form the constellation Corona Borealis, which represents Ariadne's crown. As a reminder, Ariadne was a princess and Dionysus's mortal wife. In some myths, the crown is a symbol of her royalty, and in others, it's a wedding gift from Dionysus. Either way, he eventually tossed it into the sky where it became a constellation. Once Ariadne's crown is complete, BTS leave to change costumes, and the constellation lights the way for the rest of the procession to find the Theater of Dionysus. This time V is the first member to appear rather than the last, but he still comes in after the first procession. The background players here are dressed as soldiers because soldiers really were part of the procession. They represented Athens' military might. Once again, V is playing Apollo, and he's still the revealer of Dionysus. But this time, he isn't lifting the veil on Dionysus' mysteries. He's lifting the veil on the quote-unquote history of Dionysus, which will be presented by the other members. And at the same time, they'll also be telling us the history of BTS. This is on top of the callbacks to their BU characters, of course. So how do they bring in the history of BTS? As each member acts out his scene, we hear snippets from one of their most important songs, in order of publication, no less. So when V takes the stage, we hear BTS's debut single, No More Dream. At the same time, he hints at both Dionysus and Apollo's stories through the acrobats behind him. Acrobats really were part of the Dionysian procession, and the mid-air hoops with their red and gold colors remind us of the sun, and the sun god, Apollo. Next comes Jin. He's riding a horse and he's accompanied by soldiers because he's telling the story of how Dionysus conquered India. The song playing over his segment is Danger because India will be in danger unless they submit to him. And of course they did not. But once he vanquished them, he took pity on them and gave them the gift of wine. Now, how does Jin's role relate to the BU? Well, Zeus gave Dionysus his mission to conquer India and the BU Sok Jin took on a mission to save his friends. Now here's Jimin, dressed all in white and arriving from beneath a veil. But this veil has nothing to do with Apollo, it's a death shroud. For the ancient Greeks, white symbolized death and mourning. Now, three different myths talk about Dionysus visiting Hades, but since the music playing over Jimin's scene is I Need You, Jimin must be telling us the story of Ariadne, whom he really loved. When she died, Dionysus went to Hades to try to rescue her. And unlike Orpheus, who tried to rescue his wife Eurydice, 
Dionysus succeeded. That's why Jimin's veil shrinks from a sheet much bigger than he is to a scarf that he can play around with and then drop on the floor. Dionysus conquered death. In fact, he made Ariadne a goddess. Now where's the BU connection? It's in Jimin's friends rescuing him from the hospital. They basically resurrected him. Now here's Suga, connected as always with fire. And of course, his BU character tried to kill himself with fire. In this performance, Suga is retelling the story of Dionysus' birth, but since the background music is the song Fire, and he speaks the song's final line, I'll forgive you, I need to tell you a bit more of the story to explain that. Samil didn't just decide she wanted to see Zeus's true form. Hera tricked her into demanding to see it. In other words, Hera murdered Dionysus' mother. She also tried to kill him several times, but when he finally ascended to Mount Olympus, they made peace. He forgave her. Jungkook's story relates to the kidnapping of Dionysus, although I'm sure he was a willing victim. Like all the gods of his time, Dionysus enjoyed punishing mortals who defied him, and this is a story about his nasty side. He was wandering around a seaport when he was captured by a group of pirates, or he let himself be captured just so he punished them. They thought he was a prince and wanted to ransom him, but once they were out at sea, Dionysus turned the ship's mast and rigging into grapevines and transformed himself into a lion. The pirates jumped overboard to save themselves, explaining why the song here is Save Me. But the pirates weren't saved. Dionysus turned them into dolphins. That's why Jungkook is thrashing around in the water, and it's also why the top half of his costume looks like something a man would wear, while the bottom half of his costume is slick like a dolphin's skin. He's mid-transformation. But how does any of this relate to Jungkook's story in the BU? Well, by the end of the notes book two, based on what we read in the epilogue, Jungkook seems to be swimming in goo. J-Hope's Dionysus story is harder to figure out, but Nietzsche gives us the answer. He's one of BTS's favorite philosophers, and he even has a cameo in the Blood, Sweat, and Tears MV. See? Well, Nietzsche says that Dionysus represents, quote, the horror of the annihilation of the principle of individuality. And, he says, Dionysus represents the horror of, quote, someone who delights in its destruction. I told you Dionysus could be cruel. When his worshippers fall into divine madness, they lose their individuality. The spirit of Dionysus possesses them. And that's what we see here. In fact, Hobie isn't just possessing these background dancers, he's puppeting. The laser beams are meant to look like puppet strings. And fake love is playing over the scene because the song includes these lines. Love is so mad, love is so mad. And I try to become your doll by erasing myself. Finally, when the music ends, the worshippers fall on their faces, and Gobi, as Dionysus, sneers at us. Finally, we have R.M. striding up to his Tirsus as the song Dionysus plays above him. Now remember that V arrived first in this performance to announce the coming of Dionysus, and R.M. arrived last as Dionysus. This is how R.M.'s segment relates to the B.U. Namjoon didn't come into his own as a leader until the notes book two, when he accepted Young's call to action. Now Ariadne's crown is complete and the background players lead us on to the theater of Dionysus. Everything they do is at least a loose interpretation of something from the real procession to the theater. We see maidens strewing flowers, although in reality they had baskets of food because Dionysus' role included being the god of the harvest. We see giant inflatable panthers, that always makes me laugh, because panthers are just black leopards, and leopards were Dionysus' signature animal. And if they didn't appear in the real procession, they do appear in ancient murals depicting the procession. Finally, we have more soldiers and men leading horses, seven horses in fact, which again symbolize Athens' military might, but also its many resources. And now we reach the actual performance. I won't explain it at length because this part doesn't relate to the BU very much, but it does relate to Dionysus in a few ways. For instance, the backdrop resembles the real theater of Dionysus, the fast-paced choreo matches the frenzy of divine madness, and this part represents the transformation that's so essential to Dionysus' nature. Do you see it? 
Each time one member drops out of sight, another member pops up instantly in his place. You can hardly tell that it's a new person. And that's all I have to say about the MMA performance, but I still have several things to say about Dionysus and the BU. At least one video from the HYYH era, Run, includes some Dionysian concepts. The boys lose their individuality in drunken frenzies and run as a group through the streets engaging in forbidden behavior. Of course, they aren't doing it in the worship of Dionysus, but the effect is the same. They're releasing their shadow selves and even being a bit creative, if you count the graffiti. They're also finding relief from the struggles of their lives, and that's a part of City Dionysia too. Now let's turn to the 2022 Grammys where BTS performed Butter and played thieves at a museum stealing artwork and replacing it with photos taken during the HYYH era. That makes their Grammy performance one of the earliest hints at the return of the BU. But BTS were hinting at the return of something else, too. Take a look at this fan cam image. See the Greek statues? We can't identify specific gods, but their very presence on this stage hints that Dionysus will return, just like the BU will return. Now let's talk about Dionysus' wandering, which made him an outsider in all the countries he visited. We've predicted that in the next era of the BU, our heroes will be separated across space and time. That means they'll be wandering outsiders too. Now, Dionysus' outsider status meant he was often unwanted and even abused. In response, he took on the role of villain and punished them. Well, BTS's 2022 season's greetings included a photo shoot called Stars Turned Villains. But oddly, most of the members aren't really posing as villains. They're posing as misunderstood outsiders, like a gray pianist. What's villainous about that? By the way, this particular photo shoot contains many hints about the future BU, and we've been dropping Easter eggs about it in many of our past videos. We also plan to make a one verse about it in the future, so stay tuned. Now here's a discovery which I only made as I was researching the material for this video. There is an actual Dionysus butterfly. Its common name is the banded owl butterfly, but its scientific name is Caligo Atreus Dionysos. If you've seen this video, you know how important the butterfly is to the BU. Well, a butterfly name for Dionysus is especially significant because butterflies represent chaos theory, and Dionysus is the god of chaos. But there's more. The Caligo in that butterfly's scientific name is the Latin word for darkness and darkness is the realm of dreams. So this butterfly forms a direct link between Young, the prophetic dreamer, and the god Dionysus. Now we've already speculated that when the members are separated in the next era, Young will be able to communicate with them through dreams. But let's get a little bit wild with our speculations, just for a minute. Dionysus would appreciate that. I'm not being entirely serious in this next bit, but what if Young can communicate with the others when their dreams are somehow Dionysian? For instance, dance is a big thing in the Dionysian procession, and Hosek and Jimin love dancing. So maybe Young could contact them when they're dreaming about dance. Now let's connect Jimin to the role he played in the VCR. We've already speculated that he and Hosek might obtain new abilities in the next era, so what if Jimin turns out to be a healer? That would allow him to help Jungkook, whose mental health is much poorer at the end of Notes 2 than Jimin's ever was when he was in the hospital. It would be only natural if Jimin was the one to restore Jungkook's sanity. But a lot of that is just guesswork. We don't really know how Dionysus will factor into the next era. We just know that since BTS worked very hard to focus our attention on a song that's not even a single, Dionysus must play a role in the future of the BU. One way or another, Dionysus is yet to come. Thanks for watching. Before you go, please take a moment to like our video and subscribe to our channel. That helps us get noticed by the YouTube algorithm, which helps you find our latest content. Apo bongpo.